But may I start first of all by extending my heartfelt condolences to you both for the most traumatic loss of your daughter. She seems like the sort of person I would have liked to know. Um, so thank you so much for talking to us about all of this. Um, given the nature of, of Kim's death and the interest, the press interest from around the world and, and the interest in the story, what made you agree to do the investigation? We did that because uh, we get a great uh, confidence in uh, Tobias Lindholm, the director and, uh, and the author of the series. And we see this as a big thank you to all the men and women that did the utmost that, that we could have the entire Kim back home to bury her. And it's, it's a great uh, honor to, to all these people, all these uniformed people who have done the, a great, great job. It's interesting, Joachim, throughout the investigation series, it's a six-part series, isn't it? You, you really get a sense that the background that you and your wife share, and indeed Kim shared, a, a, of journalism, really is interweaved with the way, the, the portrayal of the investigation, this kind of search for truth, the search for facts, the, the integrity. Uh, is that behind, perhaps, the sort of unlikely friendship that you formed with Jens Moller, the lead investigator? It could be the start of it, because I refused to leave out uh, uh, Kim's uh, computer to the police in Denmark, because as a journalist myself and a photographer, I know to protect my sources. And uh, Kim was very f kind of that, too. Oh, that's fascinating. And, uh, you know, what was the basis then, do you think, for, for um, collaborating so closely with Jens Moller? I know that there were times when you even recommended the path that the police should take. I think it was your suggestion, wasn't it, that the police should use dogs in the underwater search? It, it was a long time and we had many, many telephone calls together. And uh, it it was a trust, a mutual trust between us that we we trusted each other. And he always called us before he had a press conference or something like that and told us that he will tell the press this and this kind of message, but we are not talking about this. And so we, we didn't talk about it. And he... He got more trust in us, and we it goes up. And with the the dogs that we he we had a telephone call, and he was quite sad, but uh, and worried about the divers. Uh, they are nearby giving up because they couldn't find anything of uh, Kim's remain on the bottom of this large bay where they were seeking. And I asked him if they couldn't, if they have tried to use uh, special trained dogs, which we have in Sweden, but he said we don't have that in Denmark. And I asked him if he or I should call for the Swedish police dogs. And he did it. And I did it too. <laughs> and, of course, that proved absolutely pivotal in the investigation, didn't it? Uh, Ingrid, tell us a little bit about your note-making, because, again, your journalistic background, soon after Kim went missing, you decided to, to make a note each day of the phone calls that you received, the people that you'd <laughs> spoken to, the support you'd got, and that eventually became a sort of diary. And I, I wonder, was that used by the producers uh, in, in the creation of the investigation? I think it's a journalistic habit to take notes on, on everything. And I've been working as a journalist for my <clears throat> for my entire working life. So uh, and uh, so for the beginning, it was just for, for, for myself. But then I understand that this could be a book, maybe just a book for, for, for us, the, the closest friends and family. But uh, it became a book, it's in, in English, called uh, Kim Wall, The Silenced Voice. And, uh, of course, Tobias, he has written the book, but uh, I think that uh, what's in the, in the TV series, it's, it's the result of uh, many long talks with, uh, with us and, and Tobias. Uh, and just explain to people watching this interview and who have, have watched the series that's been on BBC Two here in the UK, 
explain to people how you've been able to, to find the good in this situation, to, to focus on, on, on the good work, as you say, the painstaking work of the Copenhagen Police Homicide Department. What motivated you to, to, to be able to do that? We have to do it. The, the, otherwise, we have fallen down in this big black pit and never gone back to, to life again. So for us, we have to live on. So for us, this was the only way that we could survive. It was to make something good out of it. And we think that the, the TV series focus on, not focus on Kim, but she as a journalist take part in, in, in the TV series. And of course, we work also with the Kim Wald Memorial Fund. And that's also give us some meaning that that it comes something good out of this uh, terrible tragedy. Uh, and tell me more about the Kim Val Memorial Fund. What what is it aiming to achieve? It's for uh, young female journalists who want to go out in the world and make uh, make stories in in Kim's spirit. And now that, that Kim can't uh, go abroad and make those stories anymore. It gives us a meaning that we can send out uh, others. And right now we are in the middle of uh, finding this year's uh, grantees, and we have so many good applications. So we know that for many, many years to come, we will be able to, to send out young female journalists from all over the world to go out and make uh, stories in Kim's uh, spirit. And just tell us a little bit about what viewers would have seen in the last episode of the investigation last night when you were standing in front of a room of young journalists. What, were you, what was your message to them? It's not young journalists, it's uh, pupils on the on the local uh, high school. And we did that uh, several times and uh, because we think it's so important that we tell young people to to do what Kim did go out in the world, make a difference. You, even if you come from a small town like Trelleborg in Sweden, you can go out and have the, the entire world as your, as your working field. And we would like Kim to be a role model for, for young, young people. And uh, we will continue that so long that anyone will listen to us. So we will tell what Kim was and what she stood for. That's our main goal. Uh, and Kim was an amazing journalist, an amazing girl. Just give us a sense of the sort of person she was. She was extremely uh, stubborn. <laughs> and she was very determined. And if she had set her mind on something, then she she did it. Even it was uh, steep hill many, many times. So uh, she she tried to, uh, to achieve what she had uh, set in her mind. And... It not always succeeded, but uh, she tried to do her best. And we think that in the 30 years that she, she lived, she achieved a lot and she traveled all over the world. And uh, so, yeah. And of course, you miss her dearly. How hard is it for you to be involved in things like the investigation and in, indeed doing interviews like this? Yeah, yeah uh, I, I think that's uh, that gives us a meaning to to tell the world who Kim was, not and let her be remembered, not as as a crime victim, but for for the for the daughter, fiance, sister, journalist, friend that that she was. That's the most important for for us. So she she was a talented, brilliant young woman, and we will her to be remembered like that. Well, I'm sure she'd be so... Oh, please, go on, Joachim. Only this thing that she was a mother more, uh, language uh, in Swedish went out of Columbia School uh, in New York with honors on the journalist uh, education and, 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 and with a master degree. That's incredible. Yeah, she had... Go on, Ingrid, sorry. We are incredibly proud of her, yes. and, and we will be there that for the rest of our lives. 